I actually can't believe the sun has just come out and it has been really brutally cold this morning up until now. Now the sun's out, it's lovely. So um, we're out here by the water at Hamble because it's a beautiful autumnal day now. The wind is really calm. If you look out onto the water, it is absolutely flat calm. Beautiful. And the, um, and the tide is in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my inflatable paddleboard for a little bit of a spin but I'm also, whilst I'm at it, going to answer some of your questions about everything to do with the paddleboard and to do with the van. So why the van is the ultimate vehicle for any of your water sports. So first and most important question is where do you store it? Now the beauty of this particular paddleboard and you can actually get smaller ones than this now from Red for a 9 foot 6 one and it's about half the size of this bag but I'm going to go with the 10 6 which is the most popular paddleboard that you can buy in the world. So as you can see the bag is actually quite a compact size, it's about the same size as like a suitcase that you would take on holiday with you and it's actually not far off the same sort of weight. Um, obviously the paddle itself is a lot bigger but this does actually compact down into three separate parts. Now I've got mine at the right height at the moment so I actually like leaving mine at this height but the useful thing is it's got these little nodules on them that does tell you the size that you've got it at so it's very easy to collapse down and put back together again. So where do we store it? Well the first easiest place that I tend to store it is actually in the side of the van. Again, it's quite nice and light, so it's quite easy to just lift in and out. It doesn't actually take up that much room inside the cabin area. But of course, if you've got kids traveling with you or something like that, and you don't want to leave it in the cab area, there is plenty of other places that you can keep it. So the next location, and is only appropriate if you have one of these, but we've got a bike rack on ours. So what you can do, is lift it up onto the bike rack. Now obviously you're going to have to use ratchet straps on that but of course because it's in a really good bag you can just leave it outside although we do have a bag as well that we can put it inside so that's something if you want to keep it nice and clean whilst you're on the road but if you're not going that far then just a few ratchet straps should be fine to keep it on the bike rack. So another two locations are both in the boot. Now the most obvious is um, the top rack here. And actually, as you can see, it takes up very little space in the boot here. You've still got enough room for maybe one more here or one on top here as well. So if you want to take two powder balls away with you, it's very easy to do. Another place it also fits is underneath here. You can only really fit one, to be honest, unless you push it really far back. But we tend to store all of our like screen covers and the toilet and things like that there. So another place is here. But of course, when Bentley's traveling with us, it's not ideal. So we tend to put it on the bike rack if Bentley is traveling with us. So the next question that we got, and we got it quite often, was what actually comes in the bag uh, with this paddleboard. So I will take you through what you get in this package. So firstly and foremost, you do get the bag with it, which is really good because it's got handles at the back for if you want to use it as a backpack, which I quite like. Now in the pack itself, you get a dual pump inflator. This is really, really clever because once it starts to get really hard, so once the board starts to get really firm, it gets really difficult to pump this and you can actually change it to only pumping with one of the cylinders, which makes things really, really easy. So it comes with this handy little dial and you're aiming for this green section here. Now with that pump, you also get the hose, which obviously attaches straight into the board. It's even got a special attachment for that that properly clips into it. I'll show you that in a minute. Next thing you get, this is really important, this is your leash which will attach you to the board. Now um, I use a leash because it's really handy to be able to uh, not float away from your board or let your board float away from you. It is a very handy device so I will always be wearing it. 
Now it looks like I've just brought armbands with me, but I haven't. These actually sit over the top of these. Um, these are the fins that your board has. These are pretty much indestructible, these are. Um, I've used this quite a lot of times and I've run aground a few times as well. And it, there's barely any wear and tear on that whatsoever so far. So it's really pretty impressive how that works. Um, but yeah, they're not armbands, they're just to protect that whilst you're um, traveling or packaging it up. So of course the board itself it actually compacts up really quite small that's just normally deflated and then just rolled up so i haven't done anything special there i've used this a number of times and i've re-rolled it up and it's always fit back in the bag so um i really like the fact that they've actually given you a bag that's big enough to um, not just fit in when you receive it but every single time you use it as well so I really like the fact that the bag is also completely lined so you're not going to have any problems with getting water all over your van as you can see it's completely waterproof lined and that also keeps all the sand inside as well you can also see they've drawn some clever lines on here which shows you where the paddle breaks down into and where it slots into actually in the bag so that's a nice little feature there just to remind you of where everything goes now in this pack as well, you also get, which I've unfortunately forgotten today, but you also get a, um, a phone holder, a waterproof phone holder, so that you can actually attach that to your board and then you can have your phone with you. I also tend to have a um, phone holder for my arm so that I can actually easily access it to take those photos, but the phone holder that comes with it is actually brilliant and I have used that in our previous video. So the next question is how easy is it to inflate uh, and how quick is it to inflate so it really doesn't take that long i actually consider it part of the workout it only takes about five minutes um, but of course you can buy a um, compressor for this uh, to inflate it just using the van and plugging it into a 12 volt plug uh, so that's worth looking out for but um, i just tend to use it as part of the workout again the dual uh, pump inflator does make it really easy so even someone like me who is pretty weak uh, can actually do it. One really important thing is to make sure that this is in the closed position when you inflate it because then when you unhook it if it's open all the air will just come straight back out again so you really want that to make sure it's in the closed position which is turning it to the left. Just pop that in here. Ooh. so it comes with this little bit here now to make it a dual pump you need to put this actually in that hole there because that's where the air comes out of the bigger pump so if you plug it that means you've got both of them in there once you've got to a point where you can't pump anymore and you want to just use the one pump you take that out just pop that on that little bit there and then keep pumping nice because you can appreciate the view whilst you're pumping it up as well. So what does the board look like? Well, this is what it looks like inflated. It is really, really sturdy. Um, if I put it down now, even with the fact that we're drawing dry land, you can see it doesn't really move much at all. What it is, is it's got loads of little ridgels in it. You can actually see the dots slightly along the side here where it keeps the top and the bottom connected and there's tons of them in here to make it really firm so you really it doesn't feel like your average inflatable uh, it really feels very very sturdy and i also i really like um, this foam that you've got on it that's really grippy and uh, that's even really grippy for the dog which is quite handy when he wants to come with me so let's take an even closer look at what's on the board and we'll start at the top here so at the top you've got a GoPro mount here. Now um, the paddleboard actually does come with a free GoPro mount that you can send off for. Um, we don't have a GoPro so we didn't send off for one. However it's a female attachment here so um, you can send off for that, uh, get that and then you can record all of your awesome adventures uh, using that front mount there. And uh, having seen quite a lot of other people's footage it really makes me want to get a GoPro just for that. 
So moving down the board, you can see we've got these bungee cords here at the front. Now this is really useful for, especially in the summertime, when you're using flip-flops and things to get on the board. Just propping your flip-flops in here, uh, just so that they're nice and safe and they don't fall off the board. You can also use a dry bag here, uh, it's just really useful. And then as you move down the board, we get to these foamy areas. Now, Bentley's left a few scratches in here from where he's jumped off the board. He does love uh, getting on and off the board, but I mean, this is, this is minimal damage compared to the amount of times he's been on it and he absolutely loves it. So, um, and it hasn't affected the board at all. It's just a little bit on the foam, so it hasn't gone through that at all. This here, and I especially like the uh, little logo that's on this, but this is a nice, really good grip here. And it's actually padded on the other side. Now that helps you uh, get back on the board if you've fallen off it. It's a really good grip to be able to sort of pull yourself back onto the board. Um, but it's also just good for if you're transporting the board because it's in the right position. So if you want to carry it like this, it's right in the middle. Very well balanced. Now as you move down the board, you get a slightly different type of foam at the back here. Um, that feels different underfoot and actually that helps you without having to look down, know that you're quite far towards the back of the board. Um, so there is a difference there. It's just something to note. And then obviously at this end, you've got your, um, your nozzle for where you put the air in. And then you've got some instructions around there as well. And then another handle at the back here, which is what attaches to your leash. So that you can attach that to your leg whilst you're stood on the board. Now just a quick look under the board you can see you've got three fins here and that's to help you go in the right direction, the direction that you want to go in. Now someone asked is there anywhere you can go in the UK that isn't freezing? Now of course that depends what time of year it is however there's plenty of equipment that you can buy out there to keep you nice and warm so I, um, I've chosen a 5 mil neoprene I think it's five mil. It's either three or five mil, I can't remember. Um, of course, this is a wetsuit, so it's not a dry suit. So if I do fall in, uh, the idea is it will keep me warm when I come back out again by keeping the water within the wetsuit warmer. That's basically so I can get back to shore and warm up. Um, but of course, there's loads of options out there. If you want to check out Wetsuit Outlet's YouTube channel, they actually talk a lot more in depth about this and what you could use in the colder weather. So there's plenty of options out there to keep you warm in the winter months and to keep you paddle boarding. Another question we had was, could you paddle anywhere in the UK? And um, I'll be honest, that entirely depends on where you are. Um, what I do is I check with maybe local paddle boarding groups. There's plenty of Facebook groups out there for paddle boarders, and they'll be able to give you the best advice on where you can go. Uh, there's different jetties and things that you can go off as well. There's quite a lot of um, open to the public jetties, uh, and they're usually absolutely free for someone with a paddle board. It's a, under a certain size and weight of um, boat or board uh, that tends to get free off these uh, jetties. So it's worth checking out, but usually they have a phone number right next to them so that you can ring the harbour master and ask. Right, enough talking, I wanna get on the water. So let's go. on the water, uh, stood up as you can see, uh, just um, just chilling really, it's, it's really nice out today, uh, it's actually super calm as well which is nice, there's not much tide as well which isn't much to fight against although I am being pushed in this direction, but if anything that's helping me out because that's where I want to go. Um, so someone has asked how easy is it to do and I actually get asked this question a lot when um, people uh, see us out paddle boarding and I come back to the van and having a chill out uh, they always ask how easy it is to do. Now uh, the first time I fell off a couple of times uh, and that was actually in the North Sea of all places 
uh, after that though um, I haven't actually fallen off um, since then uh, when it's been nice and calm it's a really good place to start definitely um, maybe as well when it's a bit shallower so that if you do fall in um, it's a bit easier to get back on um, but other than that yeah uh, it's not too bad again there's some really good instructional videos uh, joining a group as well is a really good idea because that gets you out there especially a group for beginners and um, because everyone's at the same level as you so it's nice to be able to share your experiences of falling in with other people What are they like on waves in the water? Um, you'll find actually that the length of the board, uh, especially the 10-6, is actually really stable going over waves because it's quite long. Um, side to side, obviously there's much less space, so it is a little bit more unstable and you have to use your balance. But of course you've got your feet planted either side so you can move with the waves. So um, yeah, they're fine. And actually uh, it's really quite a stable board and that is to do as well with the thickness of it. But um, no, I've, I've not really had that many problems with waves. Um, and when I did try it out in the North Sea when it was really quite choppy, I actually found it a lot easier than I thought I was going to. So yeah, they're, they're, they're pretty good. Have you tried transporting it inflated on the roof? Uh, well, we don't actually have a roof bar on the roof of our Cali, um, but friends of mine who have trucks, not vans, but trucks, uh, they do actually uh, transport their boards inflated on the roof. Um, so yes it is possible to do that obviously make sure you strap it down properly they are firm enough that you can transport them on the roof of something what do you do about drying your wetsuit then when you come out of the water now I didn't fall in today uh, which is always good um, but had I fallen in and I was away camping um, you can always obviously wring them out first or, or hose them down using the hose at the back of the van or using facilities at a campsite that you're at or, or whatever you need to um, once you've done that wring it out fully but put the pop top up and there's two points in the pop top roof of the California that you can put a um, washing line so I tend to hang them off there and put the heating on and then it will dry pretty quickly or if you don't want to be sat under wet clothes I tend to use our bike rack for it so when it's down When it's down, I literally just pin the items down. I'll use a clothes peg here so that it doesn't blow away, but it will dry really fast on the back rack. And obviously, hopefully it doesn't rain on them. That wouldn't be ideal. Um, or you can just use it to, you can dry them in an awning. That works equally as well. Does Bentley go on the board? Uh, actually he does. And hopefully we'll insert some footage right here. Um, he went with us when we were in Skegness and he absolutely loved it and he's been a few times since then as well and we've got a little life jacket for him, it's really cute so yeah, I think you'll enjoy that bit of footage. Very nice, thought I'd give to have one of them. If anyone wants to buy us one, that'd be great. Um, right, so last question is solid versus inflatable boards. Now for me personally, I'd always pick inflatable purely because it's much easier to fit inside the van. Um, the other thing for me is the fact that an inflatable board actually hurts a lot less to fall forward onto versus a solid one. The solid one that I tried in Croatia was really painful to fall forward onto, so um, I way prefer my inflatable board. But that doesn't mean to say that all of them are like that, uh, not all boards are made equal, so it's got to be down to entirely your preference. But for me, I would always pick an inflatable board. blows my face off. So that sound and the fact that it started raining signifies the end of this video. I want to say a big thanks to everyone for sending in your questions. It's been really interesting uh, hearing from you about your thoughts on paddleboarding and van life. Uh, if you've got any other questions, put them in the comments and I will try and answer them. Uh, that leads me to say thank you very much to Wetsuit Outlet for helping us make this video by sending us a paddleboard. They actually have a Black Friday sale on this whole week, so it's really worth checking out um, their website so that you can see what sort of deals you can get. And I think it's up to 50% off, which is amazing for a paddleboard. So check out the link in the description 
description to wetsuit outlet and you should be able to get some really good deals and that just leaves me to say thank you very much for watching this vlog and we will see you very soon